Hi booktube, Lynette here and today's video is going to be a cheeky little book haul. So if you've seen my last couple of videos you might have heard me referencing the fact that I was going on a reading retreat and as part of that journey uh, I decided to visit Hay on Wye which is known as the first bookish town. Uh, it's a book lover's paradise and it was only half an hour away from where we were going to be staying on the retreat so it was a no-brainer for me really um, to travel up to Hay on Wye before travelling to the cottage where we were staying. And although I'm kind of trying to restrict my purchases in a bookish town with so many bookshops I couldn't resist so I thought I'd show you what I picked up. The first book that I picked up Again, absolute no-brainer. Um, I went up to Hay Castle and had a look around the ruins and I popped into the gift shop to see if there was anything I wanted to pick up for myself and they had some books in there and this book, um, you just, as I really enjoy the book, it is one that I've read a couple of times before, it was a no-brainer for me because I want a copy for my shelves and to buy this book in Hay Castle, it's... Um, yeah, it felt like the right thing to do. That book is Lady of Hay by Barbara Erskine. This was her first ever release back in the mid to late 80s. And it is set uh, around a dual timeline. It is set uh, in, I think it's set the late 80s, um, around a journalist called Joe Clifford, who starts reliving in her dreams an historical timeline um, through the eyes of Matilda de Browse, who is actually factually um, the wife of the man who was the ruler at that time in that area at that time, and they built Hay Castle. Um, I've read this book a couple of times and I really enjoy Barbara Erskine's writing. This is a book that has stayed with me. There's one particular descriptive um, that has stayed with me, and it's towards the end of the book. Um, and it's to do with uh, things that Jo is experiencing because she's experiencing Matilda's life. Um, and yeah, I really enjoy Barbara Erskine. I read last year, it's on the shelf above. Um, I read last year The Dreamweavers, which is the same premise. A lot of what Barbara Erskine writes is this premise of it's a dual timeline and the main character in the modern timeline is somehow experiencing the life or being haunted by the life of a, an historical character, mainly based around the area, starting in the area where she's basing it. Um, she does her research and she takes factual uh, parts of the histo historical character's life, historical figure's life, um, which she did in Lady of Hay, which she definitely did in The Dreamweavers. Um, I've recently, with The Dreamweavers, I've recently seen um, some information about Edba, who is the main historical character, and she has followed the plot points, and then she's just built a story around that. Because not a lot is, is known about these characters, so... Yeah, I, I it was just, it was fate. It had to be purchased um, in the castle. Uh, I had intended it to be my only purchase when I saw it. Um, but best laid plans and all that, obviously don't, you know. I'm a bookworm. You put me in a town with a number of bookshops. I'm going to buy something. The second book that I bought was actually intentional. A lot of the bookshops... Uh, that are in um, Hay don't actually carry a lot of new books. Most of them are second hand. Um, and the book club choice that we've got for November, because it's in the classics bracket, I didn't want to buy it brand new in case I didn't enjoy it. Um, I'm not sure if I enjoy classics or not, so I wanted to pick it up second hand. So obviously this is going to be a bit of a spoiler for November's book club pick, but we have picked I Capture the Castle by Dodie Smith. Um, I picked this up in the Broad Street Book Centre. Um, I saw it in there and I had a look round and I found it. It was the only place I actually saw a copy of this book at all. I didn't see it in any of the other um, shops, second hand or new. Um, and I, even though I'd picked this one up, I was kind of still looking so that I could tell, because a couple of the ladies that were on the uh, retreat with me 
are part of the book club as well and I wanted to let them know if I'd seen it anywhere so that maybe they could go and pick it up if they wanted because I knew that they weren't going on the same day as me. Um, but yes, this is um, about a young woman who lives in a crumbling castle with her family um, and she uh, it's how all their lives are turned upside down when the American heirs to the castle arrive and it goes from there. Um, other than that, I have no idea what it's about. Um, the bookshop was lovely. The seller that I spoke to um, in there when I went to make my purchase, uh, she was really friendly. She hasn't read this, um, but she was really happy to talk books, um, took time. A couple of the booksellers that I came across weren't quite so friendly. Um, they say hello and everything, but, you know, I think unless you were genuinely going to ask them a question i don't think they really wanted to engage but yes um this i now have ready for november's reading because i was in a second hand bookshop and i was using my bank card and that was less than five pounds um i didn't actually want to just use my card for one book in there um because i know that some cards um companies will charge you for for amounts less than a certain amount i did check and they did say there was no limit on how much you could spend on your card um but i decided that i would get a second book anyway this is a book that i've already read it was a five star previously um but i read it on my kindle and i wanted a physical copy for my shelves that book is mr penumbra's 24-hour bookstore by Robin Sloan. I read it last year and I thoroughly enjoyed it. It's about a young man who goes to work in a bookshop but it's a bookshop with a difference. When the people come in looking for the books they are looking for specific books and they are telling him which shelf, which section to come from. They do have some general um, customers just come in and browse but the majority of the customers and he has to keep a ledger of all those people and what they're doing and it turns out that there's some kind of puzzle that they're trying to solve and um, Clay who is the main character in this he gets sucked into this as well I thoroughly enjoyed it didn't see where it was going in the end um, but I did actually really enjoy it and I'm I just thought you know what it although it's a second-hand copy the spine hasn't been broken the only sign of the fact that it is second-hand is that the corners are a little bit um turned um and it, it's just got a little it's just got general signs of wear and tear but the spine is intact and for me um that's quite an important thing because i don't break my spines if i can help it they do get broken eventually with time and rereading, um, but I like my copies to last as long as they possibly can. So one of the things I try not to do is to break a spine. Um, so yeah, so I decided to pick this one up as well so that I would break um, a certain barrier of spending on my card uh, just to make sure that they didn't get hit with unnecessary charges. So, and again, like I say, the lady was really, really, um, interested in this one because she ha also hadn't read this one and when I said that I had and that because it was a five star book I wanted a copy for my shelves physical copy for my shelves I had a little chat with her about it and obviously gave her a recommendation and then my final purchase um and I think this was actually the final bookshop that I went in was Richard Booth's bookshop and this uh actually the majority I think of what's in there is brand new books um, it was the only place where uh, there was a high proportion of brand new books um, and they had quite a large uh, fantasy and sci-fi section um, and also quite a large second-hand fantasy and sci-fi section um, but I went for a brand new book I've never seen this anywhere before um, and that book is The Last Dragon King by Leia Stone. It is fantasy romance, I think. Um, and it's about a young woman who has been told to present herself as a potential wife for the king. But her mother tells her a secret that could get her killed. That is all the synopsis really says. Um, I've never seen this book before. I've never come across this author before. Uh, there is. It looks like there's a whole series of books. I think there was four books on the shelf um in this series there's definitely two more that are listed on the back um 
and it's uh, the Kings of Avalia series. Um, it sounded really interesting and I'm really looking forward to picking it up. Um, my fantasy, my not my fantasy, my romance has been breaching out more into the fantasy um, more recently, whereas uh, before I read mostly contemporary um, or paranormal. So yeah, I'm actually really looking forward to picking this up and I'm hoping that I can find a spot for it to pick it up very soon. So those were my actual purchases, um, but I did get one more book and that's because um, on the retreat, Jess leaves us all a little gift bag, little goodie bag that has some treats in it. So we had chocolate, I had a gorgeous smelling candle, a um, couple of bookmarks, a pair of socks, warm comfy socks, and she leaves us a surprise book. She just leaves it wrapped, she doesn't say anything about the book on the wrapping, um, just she, that she hopes we enjoy it and that she's made a good choice. She tries to choose something that she knows that we will enjoy. Um, and although Jess and I do not have very similar reading tastes, um, we do kind of have some crossover. Uh, but she knows that I like romance, so she set out for me when I unwrapped it. I found that she'd left me Book Lovers by Emily Henry. Uh, this is about Nora and Charlie. One is a literary agent, one is an editor. Um, and yeah, um, she's gone on holiday and she's trying to write a novel um, and she bumps into Charlie. Uh, I think they swap books. I'm not 100%. Um, yeah, sounds interesting. Um, I mean, I've, I've seen this all over booktube. Uh, Emily Henry has blown up as um, a romance author. Um, and she has, um, I've, I've been intrigued. I haven't picked any of her books up yet um, because I have a lot of romance left on my Kindle to read and I'm trying to read through the majority of that. Um, but additions are always welcome. Uh, so yeah, so I'm looking forward to picking this up. I think it will be one of those palette cleanser reads for me. And yeah, I was really grateful that Jess put so much thought into um, what she was leaving out for us. So really pleased with that one. Other than that, I absolutely behaved myself and I didn't pick up anything else. I only have those five books. I could have picked up so many more. Um, I have a book on my shelf that is the first book in a series and in one of the bookshops I went into they had um, another four books from that series that were in absolute pristine condition. The only reason you could tell that they were secondhand and previously owned, previously loved books is because the pages were so yellow. Um, I I couldn't justify buying them and putting them on my shelves. Even though I do have a physical copy of the first book in the series, I pretty much have most of the series on my Kindle. That's how I'm reading them. Um, and I don't need to add the physical copies of the ones that I haven't got to rereading yet uh, on my Kindle on my shelves. So I, I was controlled in some ways. Um, I did put a message out on Facebook to say, hey, who, who wants to guess how many books um, I'm going to pick up? My mum said five and she did very well because I only picked up four. I do have five, but I only picked up four myself. So I think I did very well. I was very restrained um, for a self-professed bookworm. Uh, but I do recommend a visit to Hey On Why if you have... Uh, some spare money to spend on books and um, you want to go to a book lover's paradise I would say get there in the morning scope out where you want to go for lunch is my um, suggestion I was there on a Thursday so it wasn't exceptionally busy but I did find trouble getting in places for lunch um, so scope out your lunch early or um, I'm not sure if the castle allow picnics in their grounds. I know they have their own coffee shop. Um, but yes, that might be something to think about. Um, or is to maybe go after you've had a really big breakfast. Um, but take your time. 
uh look it up online as well because i had to you have to hunt around the different shops um to find them they're not all in on the same street they're on various streets you've got to you've got to explore around to find them all i didn't step foot in all the bookshops um i think i found a good proportion of them but definitely uh look up the bookshops online and maybe get yourself a map of hay on why and plot yourself out a route uh, would be my suggestion and wear comfortable shoes and that it was a thoroughly enjoyable day i did do a tour of the castle i did take a photo from the top of the castle um but that is all the footage i've got um i'm not a I'm not a vlogger, I'm not very good at vlogs, so I don't think about videoing things as I'm going round and what I could potentially show or not show. Um, so yeah, so that was the only photo that I took, but it was, like I say, a good day out and thoroughly recommend it. I hope you've all enjoyed this little book haul. Uh, if you've been to Hey On Why, then um, let me know in the comments down below if you wanna go. I recommend either having a good budget or leave your cards at home. Uh, and I will see you all in the next video whenever that may be. Bye.